Hi everybody, Ahmed here and in this video we are going to talk about hex law and how it applies to UX design. Now, hex law suggests that the more options we have in our disposal, the longer it will take for us to actually make a decision to pick one. This actually has also a term in cognitive biases called paralysis by analysis, meaning you have so many options to actually choose that you are comparing the benefits and costs of each and your brain actually melts and you are unable to make a decision. In UX design, we can actually have these scenarios for each screen. You might have a lot of things that are going on and the user might actually find it very difficult to make a decision to complete their goal. So what we are going to do today is that I'm going to giving you two tactics to actually use the hex law in your benefit in your UX designs and I'm going to be showing you examples of companies like Amazon or ConvertKit that successfully use these two principles to actually create much more usable products. But cognitive load is that amount of space your users have in their brain to actually use your applications while they are trying to reach their goals. It's almost like how your laptop works. If you run an application that is very memory intensive, let's say video editing application like Final Cut Pro, your laptop will be a lot slower. But if you run a very simple application that doesn't take much memory like let's say Chrome or a very simple app, then your PC will run much more smoothly. The same theory applies to almost our brains when we are using an application. The harder it is for us to actually go through in the application, the harder it is to use, the more effort and longer it takes and the harder it is for us to learn how to use that particular application and vice versa. Have you ever tried to learn how to play basketball? Our first technique to reduce cognitive load is basically splitting tasks, which is actually how we learn new skills. If you were to learn how to play basketball, you would probably first learn how to dribble, then you would practice a bit of your footwork once you master dribbling, and then you would start shooting, and then you would probably try to combine all those three skills. What this means is that you are basically learning an individual skill. Once you master it, you move on to the next one. And that is what we can do for our users as well, especially when they join in our application. We try to split the tasks they would have to do and to master, and we make it progressive so that they don't need to be confused about which one they have to work first. This is especially important in the onboarding boarding stage and I'm going to be showing you two applications that actually do this really well. Alright, so let's see how this application called ConvertKit uses the principle of splitting the tasks so that we can actually use less, give the user less of a cognitive load and make the application much more easier for them to learn. So I'm just gonna fill these out, no I'm just starting, so I'm just gonna type here. So I'm just gonna do one to 1000. It's just learning things about me. Let's do this. And I wanna pick a goal and then we go. So this is what happens. They give me this welcome to this uh, application. I, there's a video, I don't wanna watch the video, but see how they are actually leading me so I want to get started and then they are giving me these goals they are giving me five of these goals instead of showing all of these subtasks in the same page with their details of how to do them I will start by the first one and if I succeed let's say we go to the first one and then I see a video to actually do it I first see tasks and if I succeed I can go to the second one if I succeed I can go to the third one instead of basically giving me a tutorial of the five steps in a single page combined they split their onboarding process so that I actually get to learn step by step. This is very important for applications where you are going to be using them a lot and it's very hard for beginner user to not feel overwhelmed if the application has many features like ConvertKit. So it's literally getting your feet wet at the beginning. Now, the second technique you can use is to actually categorize your screens better. Now, picture a wall of text. And once you see a wall of text where there is almost no difference between the header and the paragraph or the paragraph with, let's say, subtitle, it's actually very hard for you to know where 
and how to actually read this particular text. But if we actually redesign it and basically make the headers and the paragraphs and the subtitles, they belong to different groups, it actually makes it much more easy for us to skim the content. And that is exactly what you can do for your personal projects as well. Meaning when you are on a particular screen, what are the groups of elements that should be together? And what are the groups of elements that should not be together? could actually simplify your screen a lot and we are going to actually see an example of this with Amazon. One application that does categorization technique very well, one application that does categorization technique very well is Amazon. If you are an e-commerce application like Amazon and you have so many millions and millions of equipment, your website structure and categorization should be top notch because some users will actually search for the item that they know they want to look for. But for browsers, it is very important to have a very good categorization set in place so they can explore. Let's say if I wanted electronics, I would go to the electronics page and I can pick stuff that I would like or if I want fashion, dresses and stuff, I can pick more stuff here. Now, Amazon does this very well, which is why it is actually one of the biggest companies in the world because it's so easy to shop here. You can look at how their cards are structured, you can look at how their top navigation is structured with the categorization basically if you are looking for electronics you are gonna see a list of and if you go below you are gonna see amazon prime shipping option etc etc meaning featured brands items are not in the same place that they would be in the electronics because they belong together with the other brands and not with the electronics every item has a place and everything that should be grouped is grouped and everything that is should not be grouped is not grouped. I mean, not everything. Probably most, there are still some mistakes, but most things. And that is one of the reasons why Amazon is pretty good at what it does. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please feel free to click on the subscribe button below. If you do, you will get a notification when I release new videos on my channel so that you can watch them and become a better UI UX designer. Take care. Have a great week. Hey guys, I have put two more videos at the end of this video that I believe will make you have a better career in UI UX design. Make sure you check them out. And if you have any questions, make sure that you drop a comment below.